In this video, I'm going to be giving you everything that you need to know about the total solar eclipse that's happening in just under a week on April 8th. And believe me, you definitely don't want to miss this event. So make sure you watch this whole video through. Like, comment, and subscribe so the algorithm knows that people are watching this video and excited for the eclipse so it shows it to more people and more people who are interested in the night sky. So first of all, what actually is going on during a total solar eclipse for any of you flat earthers out there or people who don't understand what's actually going on. So an eclipse of the sun happens as the moon orbits earth, it occasionally passes directly between the earth and the sun, casting its shadow on our planet. This shadow consists of two parts, the umbria when the sun is completely blocked and the penumbra where only a part of the sun is obscured, resulting in a partial eclipse. During totality though, when the moon is perfectly aligned with the sun, the sky darkens dramatically, revealing the sun's corona, a wispy halo of plasma surrounding the sun's surface. And this sight is extremely breathtaking and leaves all who are observing shocked looking up at the night sky in complete awe. And this eclipse is going to be the first solar eclipse of 2024. And all of North America and Central America will experience a partial solar eclipse, but only those within the path of totality, which I'll show right here on screen, an approximately 115 mile wide route through Mexico, 15 US states and Canada will be able to see the moon entirely cover the disk of the sun. And on April 8th, this new moon will be relatively large and therefore cover 100% of the sun's disk as viewed from the narrow path of totality. Some new moons are a little bit smaller, meaning they are a little bit further from Earth, which can actually be the difference between a total solar eclipse or a ring of fire. And luckily, the moon this year is going to be relatively large, like I said, so it will completely cover the sun. And during the few minutes of totality, you will be able to take off your protective solar glasses or solar filters on your telescopes to take pictures of the moon because the moon will basically act as your solar filter or solar cover for you. And this is when some of the most amazing solar eclipse pictures are taken. During totality, something called the sun's corona will be visible and is expected to be huge this time around because the sun is going through a solar maximum. So this will definitely offer some amazing photographic opportunities. You have a high focal length lens, camera, and or a telescope. During totality as well, there will be many planets and stars visible. Venus will be very bright and shine about 15 degrees from the sun, and the dimmer Jupiter will be 30 degrees from the sun and will appear during totality. Saturn and Mars will also most likely be visible. Keep in mind all these things happen only in the select path of totality where the moon will completely cover the face of the sun. But most of the major cities in the United States will only see a partial solar eclipse, meaning that you will have to keep your protective gear, solar filters on your telescope, lenses, protective solar eclipse glasses on the entire time during a partial solar eclipse. If you are lucky to live in those areas of totality or you are going to travel there, you will be able to take your protective gear off during those select few minutes of totality. Now, how can you best prepare for an event like this? Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the protective gear that you need. I have linked the best pair of solar eclipse glasses down in my description, so you can check those out on Amazon really quick buy there. It is my affiliate link, so I appreciate it. And those will definitely keep your eyes safe for the entirety of the partial solar eclipse. And all that's needed after that is basically clear skies, which you can't control, a nice place to relax and view the eclipse, and maybe bring along a few friends or whoever else wants to come and see the event. That's about all you need to prepare. It's not like you need some special telescope or anything like that. What to look for during a solar eclipse? I think everyone knows what they need to look for. The moon will be covering the sun, and you can expect, if you live on the path of totality, a really amazing event, something like you've never experienced before, where out in the middle of the day, it just randomly gets dark, and some stars and planets will appear. Obviously, the best place to see this eclipse will be on that path of totality that runs through the United States, but anywhere else you'll be able to witness a really cool partial solar eclipse and there's really no perfect place to view it. How to take pictures of this event? Well, you'll definitely need protective gear over your telescope, lenses, binoculars. You can either use your cell phone, a DSLR camera, 
and you want to make sure that the settings are right because when you have a protective solar filter over your lenses or telescopes it will make your view extremely dark so you want to adjust the settings appropriately so that it's perfectly exposed and you can get as much detail as possible and really all you need to take a picture is your cell phone with a protective solar filter and even better if you have a, a telescope or lens with a solar filter so you can get a lot closer to the actual sun and, and maybe even see some sunspots as well so i really hope it's clear for you on april 8th so you can go out and enjoy and view this amazing event i will definitely be taking a look at this and you can go follow my twitter x page down and have a link in the description or the comment so you can see some of the pictures that i hopefully will be taking of this eclipse if it is clear on april 8th so if you enjoyed this short episode, make sure to subscribe as we continue to explore the wonders and mysteries of the universe.